Alright, so today we're looking at the Marceau. This ship is really, really, really strong. And I had a mission for a certain number of fires in a single game. And, well, with a destroyer. And this is the perfect ship for that. Because, wow, the DPM and fire chance is just insane with this thing. And if you're looking to complete that mission for the, I think, Heisen directives, uh... Definitely give a Marceau a shot if you uh, if you have it. Um, if you don't have this ship, what it's about is it's a Kleber hull, but you get slightly longer range torpedoes that are slower. You get slightly better concealment. You have uh, Colbert turrets, so you don't get a reload booster, but you just permanently have really good DPM. Uh, the big issue, of course, with Colbert turrets is the shell arcs. And in fact, the shell arcs on the Marceau guns are uh, way worse than Colbert. They've been changed in the game files to be far, far, far worse than Colbert shell arcs. But you're a small little destroyer that's pretty sneaky, so it's, it's okay. You're generally closer to things, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, of course, because it's a Colbert hull, you're insanely fast and you have really crazy damage saturation. So you're really actually surprisingly tanky in this ship. Now, how I like to play it on a cap with an island like this, you notice how I pushed in towards the island and then turned out and I'm in a kiting position right now. My goal is to catch a destroyer pushing into me like this. Um, now, that didn't happen right then, but my goal was to push up close, catch a destroyer at close range, and then let my DPM just kill him. Because there's no way a Gearing or a Silly Wangy is gonna out DPM a Marceau at close range. That's just not gonna happen. And in fact, there is a DD here. He was just a little bit slow. But just look at this DPM. It's, it, it's disgusting what this ship does to other destroyers at close range. Of course, if you're playing a DD, your entire goal is to not get into these close range fights where the... Uh, Marceau shell arcs uh, don't really matter. And now we're just going to use an island, because the shell arcs aren't good, but they allow you to shoot over islands that nobody else can. Which is pretty hilarious <laughs> when you can get into positions like this. Now, there is a Kutuzov on the enemy team that was incredibly thirsty for me, so even through this radar, um, so he'll be shooting at me the whole time through the radar, which is understandable. But once the radar is over, you're going to see him just constantly try and blind fire me, which is uh, pretty annoying, and I suspect would not happen if uh, if I had a different uh, name tag and clan tag, perhaps. Um, just have a sip of coffee. It's early morning. Now, this ship is really good when you can use its AP. Uh, it, you can't use it all the time, but... Man, the AP DPM on this thing is nuts. Uh, <laughs> even more than the HE, because for whatever reason, these French guns have such a high alpha damage with the AP. It, the guns are amazing on this ship, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And so, you know, we have basically 50k damage already in the first five minutes of the game in a destroyer, and we've killed the enemy DD. Absolutely, absolutely insane. I. I usually don't have as much fun with these kind of ships because you're just generally sitting there spamming HE, but every once in a while they get uh, they can be pretty fun. I, I do enjoy it every once in a while, and that Alaska just got burned alive there uh, by me and the Donskoy and a couple others, so... This sh the goal with this ship is really to use these very forward islands to uh, to prevent people from pushing. It's very, very, very similar to my Atlanta video. Anytime you have poor gun arcs with high DPM, your goal is to not be pushing into someone. Your goal is to be kiting away and receiving someone else's push. That's what you want. And there you could see the uh, Kutuzov blind fire. The goal is always to receive a push. So, because these guys are kiting away now, and I don't want to push into a Kutuzov, Rune, Musashi that are all running away. I decide to just go dark, get the cap real quick, because, you know, our team is doing okay right now, but it can always change, you know? So getting the cap while I'm here is probably a good move. 
And there you see the damage saturation, because a rune just hit me a couple times and did a thousand damage. <laughs> with its HG, it's kind of silly. The damage saturation is just crazy with this ship. Now, of course, there's no carrier in this game, which makes it my life way easier. And that's that's really nice. But this ship can sometimes deal with carriers a little bit. It does have defensive fire. It's not a Holland. It's not a Holland at all. But it's okay. It's an okay ship against uh, <laughs> against carriers. It's better than like a, a Yu Yang would be or a Shimakaze would be, right? But that's not a huge bar to clear. Now, here I just back out, and I'm trying to spot things, basically. My team's hanging back a little bit, but I know their DD isn't here right, right now, because I just have that gearing left. So, I am free to just spot these guys all day. And I may as well, because I'm going to stay dark to get the cap anyway, so back out to spot everything. That's something you should definitely be trying to do as a DD, is spotting things. I know Wargaming doesn't reward uh, spotting damage in this game at all. <laughs> But it's still a uh, it's still a nice thing to to get. Now that we have the cap, it's time to leave. Uh, there's nothing for me to do here really. I'll just die if I push into these guys and try and burn them down, right? Like a Musashi is a prime target to be burnt down, obviously, because it's got so much HP. It's gonna tick for a ton of fire damage for me, which is really good. Uh, very easy to light up too, because it's so massive. But we don't want to push into people. That's the key. It's better to run away for now and go find where the enemy team is pushing. So, I mean, it should be reasonably obvious, I think, where the enemy team is pushing currently. Uh, which should be the middle of the, of the map with B and C. Uh, I don't really see them ever pushing back into this. Their cruisers are so far off the map on my flank. And you can see the Heisen is getting ready to push B, potentially. Uh, actually, it's unlikely he pushes in, but... Uh, he could if he wanted to. The Alsace is facing uh, B cap as well. Uh, we don't really know where their gearing's at, but probably somewhere around the B cap. So probably a good position to take would be in the B cap somewhere. Now, on the way, of course you can shoot at a, at a uh, battleship. There's nothing wrong with that. Funnily enough, the Kutuzov that stayed dark for quite a while just instantly opened up on me at 17 kilometers. <laughs> An interesting play, I would say. <laughs> but we're catching our fires, which is good. I think I needed uh, 14 fires in this game to complete my mission. There's 14 fires in a single game, which is quite a lot, but uh, a ship like this can definitely do it. Now here I ground stupidly. Um, the ship is really fast. You want to be paying attention to where you're going for sure. And this is probably one of the riskiest moves I've made in this entire game. We know the gearing's not in B because obviously he's not capping, but he could have been just outside and if I got spotted here, the Heisen and Alsace could have just opened up on me and destroyed me. Now, I get lucky that he's not here, but the correct play would have been to go behind the island uh, that's right next to me, to go south of it. That was the correct play. But now that I know that there's just the two battleships here, I can just start opening up with HE. Uh, there's an Ibuki who actually uh, had really good aim, so uh, he did a good job of hitting me, but we're saved by our French saturation. <laughs> you know, it's... These ships are crazy, man. French destroyers are insane. If you're looking for gunboat DDs, I can definitely recommend getting a Marceau or a Clubert. Uh They're kind of ridiculous. Gearing spotted in sea. Obviously, we're going to go for that. Um, the game doesn't look very close right now. Uh, you know, we're up on points, we're up on kills, it looks pretty good. Uh, but the health bars are actually very similar. So that means a lot of our guys are on pretty low HP and could be taken out at any time. That's why I have the mods at the top there. There's the score timer mod, which tells us who's going to win. Whoever is bold uh, is going to win. And then there's the HP bars. Because in scenarios like this, you might think the game is well in hand. But then the enemy team gets a few picks on your low HP ships. Like our Talon is basically dead. Our Z-23 is uh, not in the best of shape right now. Um, you know, it's, it's possible that they could come back from this. So I really, really want to kill that uh, gearing was my goal here. But 
Obviously he gets away, I wasn't quite close enough. But to manage a game, that's something I wanted to talk about with this replay, is managing a game all the way through. Because this one, spoiler alert, it does go 20 minutes. So, to manage a game and to not overcommit, but be where you need to be, is really difficult. And of course, that's the whole name of this game, is positioning properly throughout a whole, whole match. Um, so, to manage a game, you want to make sure you're constantly able to contest caps and contest the enemy destroyers. If you're in a DD, um, obviously you want to farm battleships if you're trying to go for damage. That's just what people do these days, and I don't fault them at all for that. In fact, I did that in this game because I'm going for fires, but I still want to win the game, of course, so being over here is better strategically for our team because we're helping support C. The better way to farm damage would be if I was down in G4 or something like that, because obviously their team is gearing up to push down the, uh, down the 4 line. Which is a weird play in itself. Uh, I wouldn't recommend... There's, so there's times where you can push down the 4 line, but usually you want to control the 1 line if you're pushing down the 4 line. That way you can crossfire all the people down south of A. So I wouldn't really recommend a 4-line push right now for their team, but they're kind of gearing up for it. Um, usually you want to use it as a way to get closer to the enemy team in their spawn, and then crush them in a crossfire. Fortunately though, this Musashi is just willing to sit here and give us fires. <laughs> the DPM is nuts, um, and the arcs are horrible, as you can see. But it's, uh, it's a fun ship to use every once in a while. I think these French destroyers are probably a little bit overpowered. I wouldn't say they're like the worst thing in the game, uh, definitely being carriers, Smolensk, Thunderer, that kind of thing, but they're up there on the list of imbalanced stuff, <laughs> I would definitely say. Because it's really difficult to kill them, and their DPM and firepower is just crazy. It's absolutely insane. Now here, it's okay to let the Ibuki cap. Obviously, because they're low on caps, low on points, that kind of thing. And you can see the scores are getting closer to being even, as far as kills are concerned. And we're still pretty neck and neck on HP. So, if this push is successful for the enemy team, they could win the game. This is this is a game-winning push for them, for sure. Right? They just killed our Azumo. They killed our Donskoy. They got the B-cap. I collect the Pomeran again, but... It's a close game still, guys. So, you gotta remember, managing a game is all about recognizing how close the game actually is. Sure, we've been up on points by a lot. Sure, we've been up on caps by a lot. But recognizing when and how people are gonna die is important to knowing where you need to position. So, hypothetically, let's say my team is steamrolling, right? Well, then I'm gonna be playing way more aggressive to try and get some damage out of it. I won't be playing these ideal positions for receiving pushes or for contesting the enemy destroyers. I would be out somewhere trying to farm as much damage, trying to give the enemy team the caps to let the game go a little bit longer, for example. But if my team is losing really badly, I wouldn't even be thinking about just farming out a battleship. I would be trying to contest the destroyers to hopefully prevent their vision and their ability to gain ground and capture control. That's probably one of the biggest reasons there's blowouts in these games, is because DDs gain complete control, one team's destroyers win every gunfight, and they wipe out the entire enemy team's destroyers, and then you get a steamroll, because one team has vision, spot all the spotting in the world, they have all the capture control in the world, and torpedoes, all that stuff, and the enemy team has nothing to do except run away. That's the biggest reason for steamrolls, I think. So, if you're wanting to stop your team from getting steamrolled, you gotta kill destroyers, basically. And if you want to prevent your team from steamrolling, and you want the game to last a little longer, you're gonna need to not contest the enemy DDs and let them do a little bit of work. Now there you can see the Marceau AP. You're actually, you actually can sit it at a lot of cruisers at close range, so... These little ambush attacks are actually very, very, very strong in this ship, um, which is hilarious. You'll notice that I don't actually run concealment on this ship. Uh, I'm choosing to run AFT and a bunch of DPM stuff, 
because I'm very confident in using islands. You can see I've been using islands this entire game to craft unique angles, trying to get destroyers killed, and that's how I like to play this game. Um, and I think it's probably the most one of the more effective ways to play it. Um, obviously, in more open maps, it, I would be at a disadvantage not having concealment versus a destroyer that does have it, but for the most part, there's, there's islands on maps that you can use, for the most part. Now there you can see we're on 13 fires. We don't quite have 14 for the mission, but still, 13 fires in a game? Pretty nuts. <laughs> pretty insane. And it's a close game still, right? They're about to get A, two caps. Obviously they're down on points still, but the HP bars are still very close. And their team is probably a little bit more uh, clumped up than we, uh, I don't know. We both have people kind of straggling away from the main main fight. Obviously the main fight here is to kill the Alsace and the Musashi, and then we should win the game pretty easily. So that's what I'm trying to help with. Alsace, awesome play by him using this island to block uh, not only me, but most of our team from shooting at him. So then he gets a nice little 1v1 with the Pomern. That's excellent play. If you're in a battleship, that's what you should be looking to do if you're pushing in. Definitely use those islands like that. Um, yeah, this ship can actually hit over that island. So. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, he's basically dead, so... Got AP in the tubes, may as well finish him off, right? Now... This, at this point, the game's been won, I would say. It's still close, but I'm very confident in my ability to kill a Musashi on 10k HP. I'm very confident in my ability to kill a Kutuzov or a Rune, that kind of thing. Or a Gearing that has no HP left. You can see he's on 900 health. So, I feel pretty confident about this. The main threat was that that Alsace gets around and maybe, I don't know, slaps our, slaps our Azumo really quickly or something like that. I don't know. That was kind of the main threat here. So, a really interesting game, I think. There's a lot of thought that goes into positioning in this game. I didn't just damage farm this game. If I did, I was I would have definitely been uh, in between A and B the whole game, just farming battleships. Um, but winning the game is... I, I, I try to play both damage farming and winning the game. Um, I could probably farm a bit more damage out if I... Uh, if I didn't just, if I didn't play for, uh, you know, the sea cap in this game, for example. There's our Kraken and an Arsonist on that poor, poor Mizashi. You'll see at the end how much damage we did to him. It's absolutely insane uh, what what this ship does to people. <laughs> um, and, you know, using, using islands is the bread and butter of this ship. If you have a teammate to spot for you, which our Z-23 is doing really nicely, uh, this is bread and butter of this ship. It's so good. I, I actually do enjoy playing DDs. Uh, I know I say I'm more of a battleship player, and that's because I like big numbers and, you know, turning red HP bars white and then gray. That's pretty much my favorite thing in the game. But that's getting rarer and rarer as dispersion gets worse and uh, overpens happen more and more often. So playing a destroyer feels really nice to me because we're not relying on RNG, basically. You're not reliant on RNG to do a bunch of damage. This is all very much skill-based, positioning-based, um, and just executing on good fundamentals. That's that's what destroyers are to me. So if that's why I've been playing them quite a bit more on stream, and you're going to see probably some more games uh, on my YouTube channel as well, because they're less random. They're less RNG-based, and so because of that, I get less frustrated at the game when my skill and my decision making impacts the game more so if you're someone who's been frustrated with how much rng there is in the game if you're frustrated with the uh the amount of overpens you get as a battleship player maybe try a destroyer or even a cruiser for that matter it's uh it's much more relaxing to uh to play and you'll probably find yourself raging a little bit less at the game so pretty solid performance there 210k kraken arsonist all that stuff witherer nice little carry there I I had fun with this one. I, I had a lot of fun with this one. We got our mission done, and that poor Musashi with 116,000 damage done to him. 80k in fire damage. <laughs> kind of insane what these little tiny guns are capable of in this game. So for the Marceau Captain build, pretty standard gunboat build, I would say. 
Uh, I'm not taking concealment, um, just because most of the time you're gunboating or using islands like I was talking about. Um, so AFT is really nice to just get your range out to a nice 13.8 kilometers. Any more than that I don't think is necessary just because the guns are so floaty and difficult to use. Uh, basic firing training, obviously we want to get the reload down as much as possible. It's 2.8 seconds right now, which is kind of insane. Uh, demo expert, more fires, pretty standard. Survivability export, pretty standard. Uh, trying to get our health pool up as much as possible. Last stand because, I mean, we're constantly on the move, so we need to have our engines up and our rudder, rudder usable as well. Uh, Adrenaline Rush is nice because you'll often find yourself around half HP in this thing. Uh, the top half of your health bar goes pretty quickly sometimes, um, but the bottom half really uh, drags out sometimes just due to saturation. So Adrenaline Rush is actually really, really, really nice on this ship. Um, and then I take Preventive Maintenance and Priority Target. Um, probably the best skills to keep your guns alive and your uh, engine alive, all that stuff as much as possible. And priority target's nice to let you know who's targeting you and if you can push more or you need to play a little more passive, try and go dark if a lot of people are targeting you, that kind of thing. Uh, do run reload for pretty obvious reasons because of how floaty the <laughs> shells are at 13 kilometers. It's pretty crazy to use. Uh, I do run concealment just because, you know, 7.8 is pretty nice when you have uh, uh, 9 kilometer torpedoes. It does give you the ability to stealth torp, which is really good. And you don't really need better rudder shift than 4.8. I guess you could take it if you really wanted to go hard on the gunboat build, but I find 4.8 second rudder shift just fine. Uh, using propulsion mod, this is a pretty normal one for DDs. Um, lets you accelerate really quickly to hopefully dodge a set of torpedoes if you need to. I use aiming systems because what else am I going to use? I don't think getting a little bit extra speed on your torps is really worth it on this one. Um, just because you're so heavy on like, your guns that the more shells that hit, the better. And the dispersion's pretty good, but making it that little bit better might help you win a gunfight or get you that one more fire or something like that. More shells on target's always good. And then engine room protection, pretty standard. Trying to keep our engines alive. <laughs> and then main armaments mod 1, trying to keep our ship alive. Uh, or our damage output alive. Because um, the turrets aren't the tankiest in the world, but... This ship is really fun. If you don't have it, um, I believe it's for coal, and it's it's a pretty good time. If you don't have a Kleber and you don't want to grind the line, this is a pretty fun uh, version to get, I would say. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great day.